Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well out there today. I've got what I think is going to be a pretty fun video. We're going to be doing a pre-sale inspection on a square baler. Specifically, today's model is going to be a New Holland 273. It's a little backup baler I bought. I got it real cheap and local, and I just bought it in case my 311 is giving me some fits on a day. Anyway, I already did the pre-sale inspection before I picked it up, and in fact, I even took it out and bailed about 30 bells with it or so so I could see it in action. Now that I got it home, I wanna make a video for you that shows you exactly what I looked for when I was doing the inspection. So get comfortable, hope you enjoy this, let's go. So here's today's subject. It is a rusty but trusty New Holland 273, probably one of the most common and popular balers that New Holland has ever made. You see a ton of these out there. They are old reliable, old faithful, and uh, they've made a lot of hay in their day. So now that we've got acquainted with the baler, we'll get started. So when I walked up to this baler, the first thing I looked at was just its overall condition and looking at the sheet metal. Just giving it a quick once over, all the sheet metal is uh, fairly straight. Nothing is really rusted or rotted out anywhere. So that right away is a good sign that it means it hasn't had substantial deterioration to the elements. The next thing I immediately look for is the condition of all of your U-joints. Do they look dry and crusty or have they been lubricated recently or at all? And this gives you an indication of whether the baler has been maintained and cared for during its life. Now, all of the U-joints on this baler, when I went to look at it, I could tell they'd been freshly greased um, or maybe not freshly greased, but they had been greased and then it hadn't been used recently. So that was a good sign. The next thing I look at is the chains. Are the chains completely dried out and rusty or have they been oiled? Now, when I bought this or when I looked at the spaler, the chains had been recently oiled and then we ran it. So that kind of flung some of the oil off, but I could tell that he has been keeping up to date on this and the chains had not been dried out uh, and, and rusted from uh, lack of maintenance. Moving around, I then went to the nodders. Now this is gonna be the most, one of the most expensive and critical parts of a baler. First of all, are the nodders in general clean? And they were when I looked at it. This one has a little bit of crap in it now from when we baled, and then it sat outside for a little bit until I was able to go pick it up. But just looking through the nodders, we see that both of our twine is tied. Now, this twine disc looks like it could be advanced just a little bit, um, but I'm not going to mess with it because it has been tying fine. I looked at all the grease zerks on the nodders and they had all been freshly greased, I could tell. So these nodders were not abandoned. One thing I noticed is that these nodders have received service at some point in their life because the knife arms have been replaced. This knife arm is black and that knife arm is black and the rollers on both of the knife arms, you can tell are new and not worn as well. So that's also a good sign. When I came over here to the break for the nodder stack and the needle arm, I could tell that the brake here had also been replaced. So it's got a few new parts on the nodder. So that tells me that it has been in use enough that it was worth them making some repairs. And indeed the guy I bought it from, he actually sold it to me with a warranty. He said, if you get in and don't work, then I'll buy it back. But I knew it was going to work pretty well because like I said, I had already bailed with it. The next thing I checked out was the tension of all the chains. Now, these chains I noticed were extremely loose. That's a ton of play in there. Not ideal, not necessarily a deal breaker either, but nonetheless, this is something that I'm gonna need to address right away and get them tightened up. Next, I moved over to look at the feeder tine assembly. So if we just look at the feeder tines in general, they move freely. 
still got its spring on there so they can have a return. All of the feeder tines are in there and they're not busted up, they're not bent it up. They're not bent up. This one here, don't know if you can see that, This the spring here is gonna need replaced. I just noticed that the end of that spring's broken. So this doesn't spring back, it just flops. So I'll need to get a new spring on that, not a super huge deal. And then we have a set of rollers on this track. There's two here and there's at least two more up here. So what I do, or what I did, was I kind of lifted this up with my hand and I just put my finger in there and kind of spun those rollers around. Let's see if I can show that for you. I don't know if I can see it well. It's kind of right in there. Let's see if I can touch it. My finger's touching it right there. So I lifted this up, just made sure that roller spun freely, that it didn't feel like it was a bad roller. I did that for this one as well. And then come forward over here, kind of lift this up and then check the roller right under there as well. So all these rollers spun freely. I came over here and checked this for excess play. It has a little bit of play side to side, which it should have, so it doesn't get stopped up in there. I looked at the condition of all these bearings and make sure that they looked fine, nothing looked super loose. Everything checked out there too. I came in and looked under here, just looking for any signs of anything being broken or just looking not right, obviously. Looking at the sheet metal, making sure that's okay. Everything looks okay there too. It's a little old and rusty, but this baler is only gonna be used if I have an issue with my other one. And then I might take it out and do some easy second cutting with it once a year just to keep it in shape. I came over and looked at the uh, pickup assembly drive chain just to make sure everything over here was kosher. And um, again, our chain here is probably a little on the loose side but it has been lubricated and uh, so nothing out of the ordinary here I do need to confirm that this is the correct chain routing with the book but I kind of think it looks correct and then when I come up to the pickup assembly nothing out of the ordinary here it has all of its bands it's got the wind guard up above um, it's just missing a few pickup teeth, which aren't a super big deal. You see a lot of balers missing those. These are inexpensive and, and easy to replace. I've got one missing here. And so all I'll do to replace that is there's a couple bolts up top here I'll take out and a couple bolts underneath I'll take out. And this whole thing will slide right off. And then this is the, the assembly for where the pickup fingers go and uh, it'll be pretty self-explanatory how those are installed once you see it. I came over to the flywheel and just inspected the flywheel a little bit and checked out the shear bolt and let's see if I can rotate that around. So there's my shear bolt right there and it's on there tight it's not loose anything like that. It's got its guard on and this clutch ratchets when it stops so that's or the uh, the I think it's the overrunning clutch ratchets when it stops so that's an indication that those pins are not seized up in there and then looking at the back this is the shear bolt from the back and it looks okay too I did notice this bushing or collar right here is a little loose and that I don't know if that's supposed to be if one of you guys who is proficient in the 273 knows, then uh, please let me know in the comments. And uh, otherwise, I'll have to do some research and see if that's supposed to be like that. One thing I did not check was the gearbox oil. And so I will be sure to look at the gearbox oil and make sure that's full. There should be a plug under there somewhere that you screw out and it's one of 
these. I'm trying to get a good shot for you. But I can't see, there's so much glare on the camera. Anyway, if this shield is up, there is a little square plug on the back of uh, the gearbox. And you take that out and that is the oil fill level. So if, as long as you've got gearbox oil draining out of that, you're good. If not, then you need to add some. And the gearbox oil add is right here and it's got a vented cap on it. There's also a plug on the very bottom of the unit to drain it should you need to do that. Next, we're gonna look inside at the uh, crank assembly and make sure everything looks okay there. So we're looking at that and sometimes this bearing down here can go bad. It can break, it can crack, it can be loose. So I'm just feeling that to make sure it looks okay. And nothing out of the ordinary there that I can tell just by simply looking at it. So that's a good sign initially. We wanna make sure that our uh, stop, our safety stop or also the safety latch isn't actually sticking out into here and it's not. So the next really important thing to do is to verify that this uh, safety stop actually turns over and kicks out there when the needles uh, are going up into the bail chamber. So that's something I'll check in a little bit. Next, I'm gonna be moving to something I made a video on recently, and that is looking at the hay dogs. I suspect this baler might have a hay dog issue because when I was bailing with it, the bales were banana shaped, meaning they were cupped from the front to the back like this, not side to side like this. That would be an indicator of feeder tying issue. They were actually cupped like that. And so that indicates there might be something wrong with the hay dogs. So let's go and check that out. So there are three hay dogs on top. There is one right here. Our second one is right here. And our third one is right there. And the purpose of the hay dogs is to keep the hay tight in the bale chute when the plunger rolls back so the hay doesn't relax and it keeps tension on there, gives you good bale shape. So these hay dogs have a spring and they should pop up and down like this when you push on them. They just move up when the charge of hay moves through there so they can let the hay by and once the hay goes through, they drop back down. What do they look like inside? Well, you can see them sticking down from the top up there and they're just little, little tiny, um, oh, I don't know what you'd call them. You can see their little tiny faces sticking down. I'm gonna go in closer for you. Right there that we're, we're looking at is the hay dog. And this guy right here, that's what they look like. And there is your hay dog on the bottom and your other hay dog's right there. So coming back to the middle hay dog, let's go right there. Oh, okay, well, this guy is stuck. He doesn't move at all. I'm trying to get a good, good video for you. See that? So, He's got a bad spring or something. We'll have to check that out. And this guy over here. He works okay. So if we go down to the bottom. Looking at the bottom now. That hay dog works okay. And then this guy over here. if I can get my arm in there. That guy feels like he's working okay. Let's come in from, let's come in from this side. Yep, he's working too. So in summary, we've got three hay dogs on the top. Uh, the middle one right there is bad. It probably needs a new spring. 
uh, or something. I'm gonna have to go and inspect that a little closer. So I open this top panel here to get to the toolbox and look in the toolbox, see something that looked like it might be uh, a wedge for the chamber, broken pickup, some miscellaneous tools in there, but this, I see this, and you know what this is? This is the rubber pad that goes on the front of uh, the crank rod. And this is what the safety latch would hit. So it gives it a slightly softer surface instead of hitting the metal. So it looks like this came off. And if we come in here and check this, indeed it did. You see that red pad right there? This would go right on that. And these two bolts there are what holding on. At least that's what I, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it's for. My 311 has that, and this is the exact same size as that pad in there. If I am mistaken on that, someone please correct me in the comments. Something else I noticed is we had a bag of bolts, and so I said, yep, these are probably the sure bolts, but they've committed a mortal sin. These are not sure bolts. These are just regular hardware store grade five bolts. Will they work in a pinch? Absolutely, but if you see my shear bolt video I made earlier, go back to last year, maybe the year before that. Well, don't do that because it's totally gonna depend on what year you're watching this video. Go to my shear bolt video and you'll see why I explain that you should use actual shear bolts um, because they do look a little different and a shear bolt will shear off cleanly uh, at the site where it breaks and it won't smear around like these ones can. So, I'll have to pick up some bonafide New Holland shear bolts for that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is check that needle safety latch. So I have ran a bungee around the baling twine through the inside of there, and that's to keep some tension on it. And so it's just attached to each of these points here. And now I'm going to cycle the knotters. And I'm going to move up front and in the direction of travel, which the arrow tells you, so that is counterclockwise, I'm going to spin this and I'm just going to watch in here to see if that safety latch pops out. And I'll probably take a few rotations of it. And right there, you can see it has popped out. So that means the needles are starting to enter the bale chamber. And they're almost their way to the knotters right there. So we'll just keep cycling it through to finish the knot. Hopefully I have enough tension. As this comes down, we should see that safety latch start to move in. Again, I'm just rotating the flywheel with my hand just like this. So we're gonna watch that safety latch. Make sure it starts to retreat back in when this comes around. What's it gonna do? There it goes, starting to go in. And boom, see that? Right when that crank arm comes around, the safety latch moves all the way in and then allows it to go past. So that's good. That means our needle safety latch is working properly. Did we tie a knot? We tied a knot right there. This one as well. Then one of the last things I came down and checked was, what's the overall condition of the needles? Do they look good? Nothing obviously broke or cracked on them. Do they look like they've been welded together? No, these ones don't. What do the tips look like? Do they have both of their tips? Do the tips have big gouges 
warning them that could give me trouble feeding twine no nothing out of the ordinary there either so the needles look pretty good and and pass my initial appraisal checking out the twine box now make sure there's nothing looking really bad in there we've just got some twine in there and twine seems to be routed properly come check our twine tensioners here those don't look too bad tension does seem to be a little loose but it is tying fine so i'm not going to change that if it doesn't dictate dictate that i need to then one of the very last things i did was just simply check the tires both of the tires are low i could tell they were squatting so i put a little air on them at the guy's shop before i left now these tires are tubed um they're a little dry dry rotted and weather check but aren't most old agricultural tires if they've got a two minute i don't care too much um it was only about a five or six mile trip here on the with the baler now you can pull these balers several hundred miles and guys do it all the time in fact uh there was a guy who i'm going to say he's a legend now he pulled a baler from minnesota to alaska that he bought pull it behind his truck now if you're going to pull a baler for any appreciable distance you would be well off to remove the dust cap and check the condition of the bearings and make sure they're nice and oiled and maybe uh, periodically along your way get off and kind of feel feel that and make sure your bearings aren't getting hot and overheating now this had a bale of hay in it and I wanted to remove that and I already have but I can show you what I did so in order to remove that what I'm going to do is I'm going to trip the knotter that's going to tie the bale off and then I'll be able to reach in there and pull that out and I'll show you what I did just now. pull this old bale out now since we tied the whole thing off get that wet crap out of there it's the inside of our bale chamber now well there you have it folks that is about everything i can think to look at if there was something i missed something uh critical that i looked over please be sure to say it in the comments below so other people can benefit from that if you found this useful please give it a thumbs up too because that really helps it in the youtube algorithm and i like making these videos just because it helps people i remember when i was starting out how it's hard to find help and i love to help people and then i really love the conversations the comments the interactions i have with people viewing too so please do that. Now I'm just gonna start it up so you can hear this puppy run and uh, you'll, you'll find that it actually runs real smooth. That's all we got for that. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this useful. 
Now all I'm going to do to that baler is just to find all the old hay anywhere I can and clean it out. Uh, and I'm gonna put it away under cover in my storage shed here so it don't get rained on, stays out of the elements, all that good stuff. I really only got two parts to replace uh, one of those hay dog springs or figure out whatever's wrong with that and that little spring on the feeder, feeder tines. Um, so that's a wrap for this video. Again, if you found this was useful, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps in the algorithm. Uh, please comment if you found something uh, wrong with what I said or you found something I missed. That way others can see it. Um, feel free to tell me what you liked or didn't like. And I love seeing all your comments. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Next video I'm going to make uh, is featuring my 311. And I'm going to do a pretty thorough preseason inspection on that, making sure that everything is good to go for the upcoming season, all the types of things you should look for so you can have a good, reliable baler. Stay tuned for that, and uh, I'll see you next time.